Hi, so today we're going to talk about integrating Backstage and Crossplane to create the ultimate platform magic. Now, we're going to start with a quick overview of what Backstage and Crossplane are, move into the potential integration points, and then do a demo and a summary at the end. So about myself, my name is Scott Rosenberg. I'm the lead architect and the CTO Office of TerraSky. I've been a Kubernetes contributor for over five years, sysadmin for over 10 years. My passions in life are Toro, which is the Bible, Whiskey, and Kubernetes, exactly in that order. And I am a proud platform engineering organization ambassador. So Backstage, many people think that Backstage is a developer portal, but it isn't. It's a framework for building developer portals, and that's really important. It's powered by a centralized software catalog. And the idea is to be that single pane of glass that really helps us in the end be much more efficient uh, without compromising autonomy, helping us ship high quality code quickly as well. So if we take a look at one of the key features, which is a software catalog, we can see here all of the different components of our organization. Get in, we add them to this catalog. Uh, we can see different types of components and all of that. When we go into any of these components, we can view a bunch of different tabs to get different data. Different plugins can bring in more data. We can immediately, for example, go to the source code of a component or mm, provide links that are relevant to this. We can see relationships between different components and what's part of what and what's dependent on what and who owns what. So it makes it really easy to understand the topology of our applications as well. Um, another key feature in Backstage is the software templates. And this is a way for us to easily do like scaffolder or starting kits of new projects. Uh, so if we go into a template, for example, uh, within the template, we define the schema of what the input is going to be like. So our form, we can see here we have different input types. I can select what I would like. I fill that out. We then have our, for example, GitHub repo creation uh, form where I can set the owner and the repository that I would want. Um, finally, we review our information. And finally, when I would click create, in this case, for example, the actual steps that the template takes is that it's going to fetch down a baseline. It's going to uh, run some scaffolding on top of that. It's going to publish the new repo, enable GitHub pages, dispatch a GitHub Actions workflow on that organization, on that new repo, and then also send a notification. We get some links here to the repo and the action run and all of that. Again, very customizable and very flexible. Another feature that we have is our API documentation, where we can see we support GraphQL, gRPC, tRPC, Open API, Async API. Um, it's very customizable. You could add your own API types if they don't exist here. Um, and within the API docs, we can see here again that same relationships, but in this case, it's like who provides an API and who consumes this API, which is really helpful. Uh, we also get the definition here of our open API in this case, or whatever API type, we would get the definition. We can view, for example, the Swagger UI, or if we clicked on raw, we would get the raw open API schema. Um, we can also have tech docs in Backstage, which is a key feature. In this case, what we're using is the docs is code approach using markdown files. Um, and we're able to auto render the documentation relevant to a component directly within Backstage. Again, making it really easy to get this single pane of glass, bringing everything under one simple umbrella. So from a usage in the industry perspective, it's used all across the industry. And really, it has high adoption. There are over 250 companies, public adopters using Backstage, 72 companies building plugins, six companies offer hosted Backstage solutions, and 10 companies provide consultancy and services uh, around Backstage. Um, beyond that, from a traction perspective, there's over 30,000 stars, uh, nearly 6,500 forks, 1.6 thousand contributors and over 235 plugins in the public marketplace today, showing really nice traction. If we take a look at Crossplane for a second, Crossplane is an open source Kubernetes extension that transform your Kubernetes cluster into a universal control plane. The idea is let's bring the power of Kubernetes and the idea of infrastructure as code together to create a really powerful API driven backend for a platform, which we define as a control plane. Uh, Crossplane lets you manage anything, anywhere, all through standard Kubernetes APIs by really extending Kubernetes to its limits through custom resource definitions. So the key features are really three things, which is providers, which are what provide, we have the AWS providers and Google providers and the Helm provider and the Kubernetes provider and all these different providers that, some, that basically create the controllers in Kubernetes and the relevant CRDs that they can manage. So for example, EC2 instance, or an RDS instance, or an Azure, Azure SQL, or a vSphere virtual machine, or a Helm release. We have these different resources 
uh, that are uh, reconciled and managed through providers. We then have compositions and composite resource definitions, which are our interface and implementation of those interfaces that are our CRDs basically and our controllers. Um, and the way that we define the logic within a composition is through what we call functions. Now, functions can be written in general purpose languages if you want to write your own in Go, Python, JavaScript, for example. Or you can use general purpose uh, functions, for example, Go templating or KCL or Q or Pickle or YTT or any of these different configuration languages or even just plain YAML with what they call patch and transform, which is the way that Crossplane used to work. Um, and we have all of these different functions that allow us to compose multiple resources as the backend implementation of a single custom API that we define. So really, it's about building our own platform APIs. And the way this works is if we have, for example, the user will supply what we call a claim, a user facing API, which is an instantiation of the API defined in an XRD within our composite resource definition. They apply that to the cluster, which is picked up by the XRD that's relevant and the composition, which is the implementation of that XRD uh, for this specific instance. There can be multiple compositions in that implement the same XRD based off of labels in different fields, uh, the correct composition can be selected for the claim, which is really nice. And then the composition goes and actually creates the different managed resources, which are provided by those providers. So it's going to create, for example, in RDS instance, a DB subnet and a security group, all backed by a single simple API of, you know, my company's database API. So from a usage in the industry perspective, just like Backstage is used in all different verticals, um, it has very high adoption. Um, and, you know, from small companies to large companies, public sector, private sector, um, all across the board. From an adoption perspective, uh, there are 60 plus companies using Crossplane, according to the public adopters. Uh, there are over 200 companies contributing to Crossplane, which is amazing. Uh, it's the 11th most contributed to project in the entire CNCF, uh, and there are five companies providing consultancy and services around Backstage as well. Um, from a traction perspective, there's, you know, over 10,000 stars on GitHub, over 1,000 forks, uh, 230 active contributors, and over 420 providers in the marketplace today, meaning it really has some great traction as well. So why would we integrate Backstage and Crossplane? Well, Crossplane doesn't have an official GUI. Um, and a lot of times we need a UI above complex systems uh, to really offer that better interface that people want. Um, Backstage lacks out-of-the-box discovery of custom Kubernetes APIs. And Backstage is an amazing portal, but its integration with Kubernetes is not perfect at this point, um, especially in the dynamic nature of Kubernetes today with custom resources when we're using tools like Crossplane uh, or similar uh, projects. Uh, Backstage software templates utilize already a similar schema that we define for our XRDs. So a great place of integration would be really to, you know, deduplicate the work that we would need to do. Um, and Backstage is a portal, not a platform. On the other end, Crossplane is a tool to create the backend API of a platform, making them really uh, a great pairing. Um, both projects have high adoption and complement one another really greatly. So the key integration points that we're going to go through are automated software template management for XRDs, uh, automated ingestion of Crossplane resources into the software catalog. So when I create a claim, I don't want to need to manage a catalog info.yaml file in my Git repo that's going to get synced. I want it just to auto ingest whatever I have from Crossplane into my catalog. Uh, I want resource visualization to see like the tree hierarchy of resources. Um, I want to get day two updates uh, if possible as well, because, you know, day zero we can do, but how about day one, day two, uh, and so on. So let's take a look at a demo here where we're going to go through these different uh, use cases and see how it works. So let's see here how this works. This is a standard backstage environment running locally on my machine. Um, and we see we just have the standard component and template that come out of the box with a backstage instance. What I'm going to do is on my Kubernetes cluster that's plugged in uh, to this environment, I'm going to apply an XRD and a composition for a PostgreSQL database uh, simple API. Immediately when I did that, we get a new software template for our PostgreSQL database. This is 
auto-generated from the XRD's definition. I filled the name, namespace, all of these fields here and the enum values all come from what I've defined in the XRD. I'm going to define where I want this pushed in my Git repo. Uh, and we can see this generates a pull request with a manifest based off of what we filled in in the UI, auto-generated for us, put into the right directory based off of the structure that we uh, gave it. And when I go and merge this, I'll merge my pull request. This is going to be picked up by Flux CD and applied to the cluster. So what's great here is we're giving a UI to give a great interface, but not breaking industry standards of GitOps and source control uh, like some other UI solutions do. In this case, we can also see that when we ingested the template, we also created an API endpoint for this CRD. Um, and we can see, for example, all the schema and everything that's possible. And we ingest this in and we'll see why this is beneficial in a moment. But one of the great things that we do is actually we generate, we ingested the API and we also have, when we auto ingest our claims into the system, we can see, hey, this API is consumed by this component because this component is actually the claim of a PostgreSQL database that we push to get in Flux CD sync down. So I can go directly, click on it and get to my component. I could also get to it from my catalog, right? And when I come here, we can see the system and the owner based off of the fields that I filled in uh, that we saved as annotations on the resource. And then we reread them in. We have the type as a cross-plane claim. I have different tags saying which cluster it is, what API type it is. Um, and we also have here some general cross-plane overview data of you know, the kind, how many managed resources, uh, which composition it used and so on. If I come to cross-plane resources, I can see the managed resources, the claim, the composite, all of these. I can view the YAML as well as the events of the specific resource that I'm looking at. We also have a graph view of the same thing that I can view. So the claim to the composite to the managed resources. In this case, I only have one managed resource, but you can imagine it spreading out. We'll see an example of that shortly. But one of the challenges, what do I do day two? I've decided that I want to deprecate 16.2 and 16.4 and add 16.7 of Postgres. So in order to do that, I'm actually going to use another tool, Kyverno, in this case. Um, and what I'm going to do is apply an updated uh, XRD and a Kyverno policy. If we look at what the uh, update of the XRD did, all we did is we changed the default from 16.4 to 16.7 and added an enum value of 16.7 to allow that for the version field. Um, we'll see the Kyverno policy in a moment, but basically what we've done is we've applied this. When I come to my UI to request a new database, um, this is very simple. I come here and we can see 16.7 is the default and it shows up in our enums, which is great. So that's for creating new things, but how about existing ones? And this is where that Kyverno policy comes in. We can see that we had failures. So when we come to the Kyverno policy reports page, all of a sudden I see, hey, on the PostgreSQL database, we have some failures. And the failures immediately show up here. This is coming from the PostgreSQL deprecations policy. And we can see the message is, hey, version 16.2 is deprecated and will be removed on February 28th. And 16.4 is deprecated and will be removed on April 30th. So we see this data. We can, based off of that, come to our entity scaffolder here, um, which is where we can make our changes. Come to the entity scaffolder, come and run an update claim manifest. This is pulling in the API that we have registered with the up-to-date data and overlaying on that the values that we have stored in Git. We can come here, we see, hey, I can update to 16.7. The second I do that, I review, I create this. This is going to create a pull request for us. We can go to this pull request, see that we have an update. I can see that it changed it to 16.7. We would merge this pull request and this will get synced into the cluster. And once I sync this to my cluster, we can see that everything in the end gets updated. Um, and we get our updated manifest with 16.7 visualized here. It syncs down to the cluster. Everything is great. And we're passing all of our Kyverno policies. So let's summarize here quickly. And what we can see is that there's a few key takeaways. Number one, Crossman is a great tool for building up pl your platform APIs. Backstage is a great interface above that platform. Integrating Backstage and Crossplane brings huge potential to your platforms. And please don't implement the same thing in multiple tools. Implement it once in the back end through a tool like Kubernetes is a great API using something like Crossplane and then create interfaces above it. Crossplane and Backstage are mature, highly adopted, and extremely powerful tools. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy the conference.